What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and for the last seven days, I've been driving the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser 1958. Up front is a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four, as well as a hybrid system, and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving this Toyota Land Cruiser 1958 for one main reason, and that is the fact that I was also given the opportunity during the same week to drive the top trim level of the Toyota Land Cruiser and so today I'm going to try to point out as many differences that I could see between the top trim level and this the base model so that you can make the most informed decision when buying your Land Cruiser to see if you need to spend the extra money or if you're okay with this but if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 2.4 liter turbo under the hood. Well, this is the new bread and butter drivetrain from Toyota. We also see it in the Toyota Tacoma and we will be seeing it now in the 4Runner coming up. Driving this vehicle around, I never really felt like I needed extra power. And and that's a very good thing. It is a four cylinder hybrid and that does bother some people, especially because the outgoing Land Cruiser was a V8 the last time we saw it here. However, you do have to remember that this is the smaller Land Cruiser now. It has dropped in price significantly. It's technically the Land Cruiser Prado sold across the world. So it does get that smaller engine, but again, I never felt like I was at a power deficit. Now, like I said, Paraduit is an eight speed automatic transmission. Absolutely love it. It's been good to me and I don't have any complaints. Last but not least, of course, the Land Cruiser is four wheel drive. There is no two wheel drive Land Cruiser offered. How does it feel to drive the Land Cruiser? Well, you are pretty high and mighty. And like I said, I don't feel down on power at all. Visibility has been good. Ride quality is a little bit hard because it is an off-road vehicle. It's to be expected, but it does ride nicer than a Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler that I would say have similar off-road prowess to this vehicle. So of the hardcore off-roaders, this for sure rides the nicest. On the highway, it can get a little bumpy, but there is a luxury version called the GX550 from Lexus if you do want nicer ride quality, and I'm hoping to pick up one of those later this year to review. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a digital screen along with two physical games. Ages. So off to the left is my coolant temperature and off to the right is the fuel. Those are physical. In the center, I get a little digital gauge. This is the first difference you'll see between the top trim level and the bottom trim level where the top trim gets fully digital display. This only gets a partial. I do like this partial actually a little bit better. It's a little bit less hectic to look at. On the steering wheel on the left, we have our phone options, selectors for that gauge cluster screen as well as volume and voice commands. And off to the right, we have our adaptive cruise control, skip track and mode and the steering wheel looks great love the vintage toyota badge on it off to the left we do have our climate control vent automatic high beams parking sensors off gauge shimmer switch ac outlet gas cap release and trailer adjustments now this is the panel from the top trim so you can see what's missing here on the 1958 moving out of the door we have our latch kit in and out power mirrors power locks and power windows and moving into the center we have an infotainment screen this is smaller than the upper trim infotainment screen. And you could see the black outline around the edge of this screen that sort of looks like a fake vent. That's the size of the full screen in the top trim level. So the top trim level does get this giant screen you're seeing now, but the 1958 gets a smaller screen. It still has wireless Apple CarPlay. And here's the backup camera. However, we lose our 360 camera that was available on the upper trim. We also lose the JBL sound system down here at the base level. But honestly, truthfully, I didn't notice a difference in audio quality between this base speaker system and the JBL system. So in my mind, I don't know if it's worth the extra cost, at least in that one point. Down below, we do have two climate vents and our hazard switch, as well as our climate control dual zone climate, auto climate, everything that the top trim gets except for the ventilated seats, which would go next to the heated seat buttons, but I've liked that. Down below, we have two dead switches. Now in the upper trim, this is our camera button, but even the upper trim has a little dead panel here as well. Three USB-C plugs and what would be a wireless charger on upper trims. This is just a basic plastic piece that does no charging of any sort. Off to the left, we have our drive mode select. We still 
have sport, normal, and eco. We have our ECT second and crawl button. The shifter itself, shifter is gonna be the same. Push button off to the left, very standard shifter. And down below that, we have our power parking brake and brake hold and our four wheel drive settings. So we have four high and four low off to the right. We have our traction control button, center locking differential as standard and rear locking differential as standard. Now on the upper trims, this dead switch off to left would control the electronically disconnecting sway bars. So you don't get that here on the 1958, but honestly, I don't need that driving around town. Off to the right, we do have cup holders. So we'll do a big friggin' bottle test. However, just like the upper trim and all other Land Cruisers I've tested, this too fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we do get a center console with nothing in it. However, at the upper trims, you could get a cool box, which operates as a refrigerator. So no feature like that here in this Land Cruiser, which is okay. I think I'll survive. Now the seats. The seats of the base model 1958 are cloth, but they're this really nice retro cloth like you would see from the 1990s. And I absolutely adore 1990 seats. So really, really cool to see that here in the Land Cruiser they've been comfortable although they are manual seats for a $60,000 vehicle don't love that but manual cloth seats here in the 1958 I think that they're very straightforward and I actually ended up liking them quite a bit however speaking of seats we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review all right so we're in the back of the 2024 Land Cruiser 1958 couple of things to know. First of all, the cloth seats do carry on back here. The seats are kind of hard. To be expected at all trim levels, the seats were kind of hard, so it's not specific to the 1958. Even the leather seats in the top trim, also hard. However, my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me, my head's not hitting the ceiling, and as I'll talk about later, I had this back seat full of people, and they were all comfortable, so that is definitely nice to see. I also do have my own climate controls down here. I have two USB-C chargers and a 12-fold outlet, and we do get a center console with two fold-down cup holders. This is a nice place to be. I like that the Land Cruiser isn't trying to jam a third row back there, so that is definitely very nice. I can spread out, I can be comfortable here, and it's not an issue. However, speaking of space, we do have a trunk, so let's hop back there. All right, we're on the back of the Toyota Land Cruiser. First of all, my favorite feature, push button here, and we do have a rear opening window. Absolutely love that, gives you access to the back. Now, the other thing, the top trim level had a power tailgate. This has a manual one, so button in the middle, and you pull it up, you just get two struts. It's not that heavy, but again, a power tailgate would be nice. Once we are back here, we get this nice Land Cruiser mat down here. We do have this little sticker, I pointed this out on the top trim as well, that this little shelf can only support 60 kilograms. So something to note there, because the actual hybrid battery pack is down below we do get chargers and cup holders back here as if there were a third row but there is not so kind of interesting to see that we do get a wall outlet over here as well 120 volt 2400 watt very cool to see that and we do have a spot for a privacy cover however we don't have that hooked in come back up here as it is a manual tailgate handle chuck it down like that and there you go now we got to talk about the looks and we'll get to the headlights in a second but again i love the look of the new land cruiser i love how boxy it is it really is a retro throwback while still being fresh and modern it doesn't look like this was built in 1985 but it has that similar language and i really really like that i like the headlights and taillights let's talk about the headlights so the headlights do change with the trim levels on that top trim level that i drove I had the rectangle headlights, but now on the 1958, I have the circular headlights. So it is up to the trim, which is unique and something that Toyota hasn't really done in the past. So cool to have those options. Speaking of lights though, the lights at night absolutely sold me. These round headlights are my favorite headlight setup on the new Land Cruiser. They look wonderful. They really, really do look like older circular sealed beam headlights, but with a modern flare. And I love that. And the tail lights look great too. The little thin line lights that show at night. Absolutely love that. This car looks fantastic. And I've smiled every time I've walked out to it this last week. With all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving two Toyota Land Cruisers for the last seven days? 
Well, first of all, I really, really like the Land Cruiser. Overall, I think the Land Cruiser has done fantastic. My only true hesitations have been the engine, the 2.4 turbo. It just doesn't have that much evidence behind it that it's going to be reliable. Now, I trust Toyota fully. If anyone's going to build a reliable turbo, it's going to be Toyota. And I've talked to Ahmed from the Car Care Nut channel, and he said that these should be pretty good. The downside of it is that this is a premium fuel only vehicle, so it is going to cost you more at the pump just to be aware and yes the price tag is steep but everything is pricey these days get over it so what's the bottom line now having driven and actually lived with both vehicles is the top trim worth it and i have to say I absolutely adore the top trim. The ventilated seats, the brown leather seats, the cool box in the center console, the bigger display, the bigger digital gauges, the better sound system. It was a very nice package, but also the Land Cruiser is an off-road vehicle. And so if you want 99% of what the top trim offers, get this, this is a more true to basic vehicle for off-roading. If you're gonna take it down a trail, get this. Unless you really need those electronically disconnectable sway bars, maybe. But at least where I live, there's no chance of even using that feature. Unless you go to Moab, Utah, unless you go to Kings Canyon, unless you go to these hardcore off-road spots, you might not need that. So that would be like one side or the other that I would fall on, but I really truly feel like the 1958 trim level is the best deal. I like the cloth seats. I like how rugged and how good this vehicle looks. And if I can be completely honest for you fellas out there, girls loved it. I drove my girlfriend and two of her friends into the city of Chicago for a dance event and they loved it. They loved this thing. They thought it was cute. They thought it was fun. They liked being up high and things like that. So I guess any buying advice I can give you is if you want to attract women, be kind, be courteous, listen thoughtfully, and buy a Land Cruiser. I guess that's a short list you can live by. But I personally, if I were going to buy a Land Cruiser, I would buy this, the 1958. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota for the opportunity to try out both Land Cruisers, as well as Drive Shop for facilitating the cleaning and delivery of the vehicles, and of course, the Midwestern Automotive Media Association. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.